After almost a full year of playing SSX, we felt that we were ready to hit the slopes ourselves and put what we learned in the game to good use. Oh. We were wrong. Oh. Yeah. While nursing our bruises, we were glad to hear that the folks at EA Canada had spent that year working on SSX Tricky. SSX Tricky is the world of SSX a year later. The world circuit is, uh, is back on this year. Uh, we have six of the original riders coming back and six new riders joining the season as well. We've got two new venue locations and all last year's stops on the tour are back as well. Over the course of the year, you can expect normal mountain or real mountain would uh, have some considerable changes. Uh, we tried to reflect the same kind of thing in our courses, but we also did a lot of deliberate work to try and make them a lot more fun and really enhance the, the show-off aspect of the game as well. Give the player a lot of opportunity to pull more tricks. Garibaldi is a dramatic run. Well, we couldn't wait to get our hands on the game, so the first thing we checked out was the new tracks. Garibaldi is a new first course. One of the things we discovered uh, with last year's game was that um, we wanted a much more forgiving first track. Large air, big drops, very fast speeds, with very wide uh, bank turns and that. So it, it gives a much more compelling first experience for people to kind of get their bearings on the track. We try to uh, make it easy enough for the first time user, um, and yet we kept hidden shortcuts and certain elements that are very uh, effective for the experienced user as well. We have a huge uh, drop right off the bat. It's about 300 or so meters free fall. So yeah, it's a great new track. Not only are there new courses to explore, but a whole new crew of riders to choose from. Out of the six new characters we've got, uh, Simon is probably one of my favorites. Last year I felt we had a lot of, you know, pretty mainstream sort of characters. This, this guy brings a real element of danger or unpredictability to the mix, which is something that we're really happy with. This is the stop! Ooh, Simon says, big hairy freaking deal. Look at that! I am the man! Luther Dwayne is a, is a good old boy, and he thinks he's quite the competitor. You look like you need protection, you nambit pambit, just a freak jumping boot. Wimp. Uh, his sheer size is the thing you need to look out for there, as well as his attitude. You want rough? I'll give you rough. And you really just try and make sure that your, your biggest visual cues are going to come across. Uh, particularly from your rear view, which is the, the gameplay view for the most part. So looking at a character's butt down a, down a hill all the time, it better better look good. <laughs> so I guess Luther Dwayne is probably a good example of that. He's got quite a sizable crack showing in the game. One of my uh, favorite new characters is a, is a character that's been described as kind of dorky cool. Uh, his name's Eddie Wachowski. Uh, he's got a red afro. Upon physical uh, first impressions, you're kind of going, what a dork. Um, after you kind of get a little bit of a sense of his dialogue and his delivery and things like this, he's, he's not so bad. He's, he's just got his own style, his own thing going on. Eddie's voiced by uh, David Arquette. You're not really picking me, are you? <laughs> just kidding! And that was a huge contributor to the overall uh, uh, sense of Eddie the character. That felt worse than it looked. Besides David Arquette, other celebrities that were involved in the game included Lucy Liu. This is going to be very interesting. Billy Zane. May Buddha wax your way to victory. Oliver Luther Platt. In the hell. And Macy Gray. Oh, look at them shoes. Why are you getting shoes? <laughs> the surprising thing uh, for me personally was that a lot of them were familiar with the game and had actually played it quite a bit. David Arquette uh, was quite familiar with it. Macy Gray plays with her son. Don't sweat me, don't sweat me. Look me over, check me out. A lot of them sit in studios and voice over movies that they work on anyway, because all that stuff has to be redone after they shoot it all. So they're used to sitting in a studio and reading scripts and, and really putting a lot of effort into how they deliver it. So it was pretty, pretty neat to see, actually. I got what you need right here, baby. Let's ride. All right, all right, let's go! Yo, yo, what's up with that? The improved character development is not only in the voiceover, but can be seen in the artificial intelligence. 
We found that in last year's game, the pack separated reasonably quickly, and you didn't really get much of that passing people in the corners because you typically only had one guy off in the distance and maybe one person behind you. So with the six riders that are on the field, we worked out a much more um, uh, tight racing environment. The second aspect of it that, that I'm really uh, quite excited about has to do with the aggression AI. Last year we had a little bit of random probability of other riders getting a little physical with you. This year we've created a real dynamic environment to that. So they react to you based on your pre-established relationship with them as friends, enemies and neutrals. With no friends in the lineup, you better be careful out there. These characters know each other. There's uh, animosity in some cases, there's alliances in other cases. You push your friends around, they're going to ask you what's going on, they're going to talk to you. You push your enemy around, and that guy's going to come after you, he's going to kick your butt down the hill. Each one of them has a tolerance and an aggression value. The tolerance has to do with how many times you hit them before they react. There's three levels of reaction. One is a verbal response, the second is a little bit of a physical and verbal response, and the third level is a seek and destroy response. It's playing awesome, we're just in love with it. Sound and music can really make the video game experience immersive. In SSX Tricky, they've taken it a step further. EA Sports, a couple years ago, um, built a bunch of software that we use in-house, which enables us to take music and make it change depending on events driven from the game. When we get the songs for the game, we go, actually, what we could really use is your multi-tracks, and we remix the multi-tracks to give us a couple different levels of intensity on the song. So uh, the high level would be like the standard tune that you're hearing, but if you're boarding really bad, um, what you might take out like a guitar riff or take the bass out, so it's just like drums. And uh, so the software actually changes this all up like on the fly. So this interactive music software that we have is this like state of the art. I mean, it's changing the music every bar depending on how well you're doing. The interactive music is definitely cool, but what really makes you feel that you were in the game and not just playing it is the fact that the audio is in four channel surround sound. We spent a lot of time this year kind of sorting out uh, how to do DTS surround. So what it does to the sound is you've got boarders coming in from behind you. They'll start talking at you and you can hear them coming up on your back. Or if you hit something, it'll fly by you and it sounds like it's going by in full theater style sound. Once you start listening to DTS digital, it's really hard to go back to stereo because it sounds so good. It's just, it's really immersive and it's like you're in the middle of the game. Well, luckily for us, a bruised ego was the worst of our injuries. But at least we're in top physical condition for another winter on the SSX circuit. <laughs>